Today, after British Prime Minister Boris Johnson's surprise visit to Kyiv, Ukrainian President Zelensky said other countries should follow the UK's example and impose a full embargo on Russia's energy sector. As the former Ukrainian Minister of Energy and the current CEO of Naftogaz Ukraine, Yuri Vitrenko is sending a stark message to Europe, quote, you don't pay in euros or rubles for Russian gas and oil. You pay in the lives of the same Europeans as you. And Yuri Vitrenko is joining us now uh, to discuss more about this. Europe is reticent to go for an energy embargo because it gets about half of its energy from Russia. How would it work if they were to do it? How could it work? Uh, first of all, energy efficiency should come first. So sometimes you just need to consume or waste uh, le less energy. It's completely doable. It's good for the climate, but it's also good uh, in the current situation not to pay uh, euros uh, to Putin. Uh, also, you have to um, develop uh, alternative uh, energy uh, supply. You have to, for example, get more oil and gas from the US or from other countries without rogue regimes like uh, Putin's one. So there are ways uh, how to do that if there is a, w a wish. Uh, also, for example, when they say that they're dependent on Russian uh, gas and oil, we still insist uh, on an embargo. We're, we're just saying that uh, there can be some uh, exemptions, but fair ones. Like, for example, uh, only some countries really depend on some pipeline uh, supplies of Russian oil and gas. Uh, they could keep it, for example, for some time, but then there should be, to make it fair, there should be a special duty uh, on such supplies. So that they're not just benefiting of uh, Russian oil and gas if they say they're so critically dependent. Again, they can uh, pay some additional tax on it. Then we're advocating an idea of escrow accounts when we say, OK, you can pay, uh, you can get this energy, but don't uh, give uh, Putin this money now. Uh, freeze it and then make it uh, conditional on full withdrawal of troops uh, from Ukraine and some payment of reparations for the damages uh, uh, in Ukraine. So again, uh, I think that it's, uh, it's more about uh, either some uh, lack of understanding uh, what to do uh, in order to get rid of this dependence, or maybe even some corruption among uh, some big businesses uh, in the EU or some politicians, as we know. Let me ask you this. There, I think the impression is that an energy embargo of Russian oil and gas would just defeat Vladimir Putin's regime. But there is some possibility it would not completely do that. What then? Uh, it's a major source of revenue for Russia's state uh, budget. Uh, should we have a full embargo on Russian oil and gas, Putin would not be able simply to pay to his soldiers and to buy support uh, from the uh, Russian people. And it would complicate his life enormously. So if we're honest about so-called crushing sanctions, then full embargo is a must. Can you talk to me a little bit about what's happening here mm. in Ukraine when it comes to the energy sector and it comes mm. to supplying the armed forces and it comes to humanitarian mm. efforts that you're involved in? I cannot discuss supplies uh, to the army for obvious reasons. Uh, but uh, yes, we do, for example, supply gas and oil uh, to Ukrainian people. About 90% of Ukrainian households depend on uh, gas, natural gas for heating. So we are keeping uh, basically all the Ukrainian homes uh, warm. Um, and it's a challenge, of course, during the war. Um, it's also an economic challenge because it's more of a humanitarian assistance at the moment rather than a business. This month alone, March, uh, um, Naftagas, uh, the company I'm leading, subsidized uh, Ukrainian customers for more than $1.3 billion, uh, because we understand that during this war, people cannot, uh, many people cannot pay at all. Uh, some cannot pay the full price. Uh, we need to maintain the infrastructure despite uh, uh, the missiles attacks. And uh, again, so our costs are up uh, and people cannot pay, but we cannot just cut them off from some critical utilities like heating, again, electricity, uh, and other stuff. That's why we believe that uh, as a national company, we have to do it. We would welcome, of course, any international assistance because it's important to make sure that uh, those who stay in Ukraine, and we're talking about tens of millions of Ukrainians who are still here, they can get some critical supplies. And the utility sector of Ukraine is a very important in terms of, again, maintaining the lives of Ukrainians here.
Yuri, I thank you for thank joining you. us today. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank Yuri you. Vitrenko, we do appreciate it.